Welcome on and thank you very much for uh, for taking the time to Dude, be with great. me. Thanks for having me on your show. Did you bring a, a drink? Okay. Yeah, water. I was expecting some G Fuel or some fucking like... Yeah, I was thinking about doing G Fuel, but I really need water right now. So I figured that's the move. <laughs> Think first things first, I, I want to ask the good old question. If you can in 10 seconds, who are you? What do you do? I'm Dino Bino. I'm a variety streamer. I play video games with my music, a bunch of different instruments, bongos, recorder, drum. But I like switching up every time I go stream. That like that means I'll play like different games every time. It won't just be like a different instrument every time. I'll always try to switch up the games and stuff. How did you get the name Dino Bino? Well, my name is Dean, so the only nickname I ever had at school was Dino. But then eventually one of my IRL friends just started calling me Dino Bino. And so eventually when I got my first Xbox, when I picked a gamer tag, I was like, okay, well, I may as well just go with Dino Bino and it was available. So I've had that gamer tag for almost 10 years now. When did you start your kind of content journey? Where did it all start? I was I was on YouTube, like just watching videos back in like 2006 or seven. So like before it was owned by Google. Back when like on YouTube, you could actually like rank all, like you get on the website, you could like check everyone's like ranking in terms of like country and style and all that. I miss that, man. <laughs> I miss that. I posted my first YouTube video in like 2008 or something, I think. When I first started playing drums, I did like a chop suey drum cover. Is that anywhere to be seen? Uh, that can be found. Can it's be. It's very bad, but it exists. I made a few, a few other drum covers and videos on that channel, but I didn't make my Dino Bino channel until a few years later. I started uploading on that once BO2 came out. I did have BO1 game clips that you could just like render from theater mode and just like it auto uploads to their youtube yeah, i didn't start posting on my dino bino channel until bo2 came out and theater mode is in that and i could just record all my clips from there and post it right to my youtube when did you kind of start experimenting with different methods to to play the game it would have been late august i'm pretty sure and that would have been the first time i ever used like an instrument to play a video game so, was that the clip that went hella viral with the, the drum yeah so yeah that was like my testing actually i was it's unfortunate because that wasn't the first ever kill on a drum kit. The first ever kill actually didn't save properly because it was just like my my PC just wasn't powerful enough. And so Streamlabs is completely shitting itself. It was out of sync. I had to make I had to get it all in sync first. I should have just done it in private match. Anyway, that was like the third. That was the third kill, I think. I do have a recording of the first kill, though, somewhere because I was in a Discord call with a bunch of the, the Sith guys. I'll have to find it again, see if you can actually like see any of it. I can't even remember. I think the map was a uh, pet petrov oil rig it was my first time ever playing petrov oil rig and it was on a drum kit and i got my kill on that the uh, funny thing about that clip is that i was like just testing it getting ready getting it ready for like the next day for streams um it was like 10 at night on a saturday and so obviously like that's not like prime time hours like posting stuff usually people post stuff at like 3 p.m um I just posted that at 10 p.m. I was like, I literally had just recorded that little snippet, just trying to like test my stuff out. And I was like, you know what? I bet this will get maybe like 100 likes tops. Like people will find it funny. And then overnight, it just went to like 50K and then it got to like 100K likes. Once I woke up in the morning, I had posted it to like TikTok, Instagram. Um, my roommate told me I should post on Reddit. I'm like, yes. Like, if he didn't tell me to post on Reddit, I think it wouldn't have got like half the attention it got. Reddit just, yeah, because it, it literally made the top of Reddit. Like, it made front page top of Reddit. He got over 70,000 upvotes. How do you set up doing that? I mean, in terms of like actually physically setting it up, it takes a little bit. But in terms of actually getting like the drums to work, my drum set's electric drum kit. I can just plug it in straight to my PC with USB. And then that I can that with that I can send MIDI signals on my PC, um, and so each different drum and cymbal is a different uh, signal. And so I just had a program that I used to to remap every different MIDI note to a different keyboard command. So like when I turn my camera and stuff like that, each time I hit the drum, it's like 10 pixels. And so when I do drum rolls, it just like just naturally just flows to the when, left and right. Wh where, when was the, the realization was like, right, let's do this, let's try it. Did you get any inspiration from anywhere or anything? I, I initially thought about it when um, there's a game called Clone Hero 
which is like a Guitar Hero uh, clone, I guess, on PC. I think it was late, like 2019, actually. Um, they announced like is like they only had the Guitar Hero parts for the for the game, but they announced I think late in 2019 that they're gonna add drums. So I was like, okay, wait, if I can play like Rock Band slash Guitar Hero on my drums on my PC. What stopped me from playing other games? So that's where the idea came in. For uh, Rock Band 3, you were able to use your electric drum kit as the Rock Band drums with this adapter. And so I was like, okay, all I need to get this is this adapter and I should be good. The only problem is that, adapt that adapter, you get a very limited amount of commands. So, and it just wasn't enough commands for like me to do what I wanted to do. And it was a controller command, it's not keyboard command. So I was like, this isn't gonna work. And so I kind of forgot about it for a little bit. I looked at other solutions, but every like every program that uh, I was looking at, people saying online that like, oh, it has like input delay and stuff. So I was like, okay, well, this is not gonna work. But then one day on the internet, I found this guy, CZR Drums. He, I, he showed up in this like, I think it was like a Twitch video compilation. He was the first clip and he's doing this glitch on Super Mario 64 on a drum kit where he does like backwards long it's like i think they're called just backwards long jumps just blj's and you go like super fast up the stairs backwards and like it can take you past doorways that like, you're not supposed to be able to get past otherwise so once i saw him do that i'm like okay not only does he like have the amount of like bug commands necessary but he's like able to be pretty precise with it it's pretty like consistent like it doesn't look like it has a lot of input delay so i'm like okay once I saw that, I didn't even like message him or ask him. I'm like, I knew exactly what he did. So I, I got my program up. I started setting up uh, commands for my drums and I finally got it working like like that night. I, just, I dedicated that whole night after seeing that clip. But he does speed running. Like, he literally speed run SM64 on a drum kit. It's the craziest shit. I wish I knew enough about a game to speed run it. I, I can't remember the, the the names of them. A couple. Yeah, but like you, you, you're pretty fucking like knowledge. I wanna learn how to speed run Jack and Daxter. That's it. That was the first that's game it. I ever had. Jack and Daxter. Yeah. That's the one that you. I've play been on. playing that a decent amount recently on stream. That was for yeah. your 24 hour, right? That was the first 24 hour I did ever. My favorite thing about 24 hours is that I'll have people coming at the start, and then they'll like do a whole stream, go to sleep, get up the next day, do a stream, and then. And they'll come to my stream and i'm like still live <laughs> how do you like prepare yourself mentally and physically for those 24 hours because you do them scarily often i've been doing them yeah i i wanted to get to a point where i can do one every couple weeks and technically this weekend would be the weekend where it's been like two weeks since i've done my last but the last one hit me hard when i like i'm trying to prepare for it all i mean like i don't really do a whole lot i make sure i have food ready so i don't have to like do a bunch of cooking in the middle of the stream because i'm just taking up a bunch of time yeah i just go to sleep get all the sleep i need and then i hit live like within the first half hour hour of the day if i can i i don't think i could do a 24 hour at least for another like year oh he could definitely could you just gotta have like that's why i like doing the marathons as part of it because like, yeah you have a goal in mind right if you're just to do like a 24 hour playing zombies or like multiplayer you're just gonna get bored as fuck and you're gonna be like why am i even like doing this for 24 hours what instruments do you play other than the drums so i started taking piano lessons when i was like three years old i think so i took that up until when i started taking drum lessons and i was like 11 or 12. But I, I don't know. I, I liked piano a little bit as a kid, but I, I hated practicing. I hated it so much. But they like make you learn out of like a book, I guess. It's all like classical stuff. And it's just like, I just want to play songs I like, you know. You make a music playlist in 10 seconds. Give me your top three that are going to be added. Top three songs? Oh my God. Oh, uh, that's so hard. Now I'm going to have to go through my Spotify <laughs> and like give you like, okay, so Forever by Glass Tides would easily be the first out of the three. That song was in Region of ON, and that, I fucking love that song. I'm so glad I was put onto that song. I don't even know the other two, man. That's like the one song that's really stuck with me for the past like year. Um, okay, here's the other song. Uh, Touch the Sky by Kanye West. You you recently joined Soar. How did how did you get into Soar? Well, I mean, I've been part of the COD sniping community for seven, almost, oh. Am I eight years yet? Yeah, probably about eight years ago now. I stumbled on the COD sniping community. And it's funny because my introduction to the community was this Soar RC. And so I was like, oh shit. Like, I just didn't realize how big Soar actually was and how big the community was. 
So I was like, oh, maybe I can get in this team. We'll see. So I just like went for the RC. I like put like, a bunch of like sniper streaks together from like theater mode. I upload the RC or like the, the response video. Get seven dislikes in the first minute. People are like commenting on my shit, like giving me shit. Be like, you suck. You're not getting in. I'm like, damn. Like, but I, I wasn't even like that sad. I was just like, what am I doing wrong? Like, I'm so confused. I watched this guy's response to Zeblo. And he's he was like from Quebec. He's one of the best snipers I've ever seen. And I look at his response, and in the first, like, five seconds, it's this hijack clip where he gets a five on, and then he turns it into a quad headshot feed. So it's like a kill chain, five on into a quad head. I'm like, dude, like, okay. I, I understand now. It makes sense to me. I, I knew at that point that I was, like, pretty far behind, like, all these top snipers. Like, I was way in over my head. That kind of just, like, sparked the interest in all of it and started grinding. So, I mean, I, I wasn't grinding specifically for Soar at that point because I knew that, like, Soar is way too big for me at the time. That got me interested in the community, and then I spent a bunch of time in the community, met people that were in Soar and these other teams. When I came back to, and I started streaming last year, that was the only team that I really saw myself being in. In terms of like a big org, like like they're the one big like sniping team that has turned into an org and still ha like stays in its roots a bit. And so I grinded for Soar when I started doing the drum covers. And I put like hashtag Sordino in my tweets and like, I'm, I don't want to be one of those people that puts like hashtag Sor whatever, obey whatever. And like every single one of their highlights, every single one of their going live tweets. I find that shit just gets a little tiring and I don't really want to like base my content around a team I'm going for. Eventually I just stopped putting like hashtag Sor shit or whatever, like in my titles and my like, highlights. So, like at that point, like the people that recruited for Sor and like other people in Sor already knew I wanted to get in. Doing like specific grinds for teams, like that's not a bad thing necessarily. Like I've seen a bunch of people announce a grind for a team and then get in that team. Like it's it, it works. For me, it was just coming to a point where like, even with my drum covers, I started doing a lot more sore videos. I'm like, you know what? Like, even though I, I love like the sore montage and stuff like that, I was like, you know what? Like I can't be like letting this grind reshape how I approach my content, you know? Make yourself happy, make content you like that you think other people will like. You can't just like change your whole content just around a team or like, like a brand if you're trying to get like a sponsorship or whatever. What are the best memories uh, from you growing up uh, playing video games? <laughs> Majority of my best memories as a kid is just playing video games. I've been, I got a PS2 for Christmas when I was four years old. And so my first ever games were Jack and Daxter and Crash Team Racing, both made by Naughty Dog. So shout out Naughty Dog for creating my childhood. In, in the content world, what other content creators do you look up to? In terms of like the stuff I do specifically, CZR drums, who I mentioned earlier, definitely someone I look up to. Super Louis 64 is another guy that plays a lot of different video games with weird controllers. He, he's done some, he's done like Super Mario 64 with motion controls and shit. So that just like shows how like far advanced like they are. Same for a guy named Rudism. Rudism was one of the first people that reached out to me when that drum clip went viral. And he's like, he's literally beat um, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time with an ocarina as the controller. <laughs> he like has a 3D printer. He'll literally like build controllers. He's also a game designer. So he, he's a coder. He's made these control. He's, he's next level. Like that's the kind of stuff I want to be getting to, you know? Because, like, so far I've done, like, different instruments, which is good, because that hasn't really been experimented with a ton. I've done, like, Guitar Hero controller, Donkey Kong bongo controller, but, like, people have used those before to play video games. I'm actually not the first person to play COD with the Donkey Kong bongos. That was uh, Super Louis 64. Well, I think guys. the dream collab is to, to collab with CZR Drums, honestly. Do some sort of uh drum video together he okay so he does speed runs of sm64 right he's trying to get that to become an official category for the game but the only way for that to happen is if there's at least one other person running that category and so of course he comes to me and he's like so here's the situation i'm like yes i will do it because like obviously i want him to get a category right and i know i won't do nearly as good of a job as he would because he knows that game inside and out, right? But you'll be number two. He'd probably help me with some of the glitches, like figuring out some of it. But in terms of like the movement and like, he he already knows the levels. He has it already mapped out in his head, right? I don't, I've never played Super Mario 64 before. So I don't know the levels and how they're mapped out and where to go 
What has been the biggest thing that you've achieved this year, 2020? I don't know, 2020 was a big year for me, man. I spent a lot of time inside. But getting the streams, like starting the streams and finding myself and my content was my biggest achievement of 2020. It's been the biggest thing this year so far. In 2021, is I've started doing daily streams and having people that want to just hang out with me and support me and like just be there with me. Every stream, you know, I'm changing shit up, but there's still people that come in every day. You know, that's so huge for me one last question and i, I do yeah. this um with every single video and my friend naomi asks and you've probably seen it in the tweet um mm -hmm. if you were a cat what would you do it's funny because I've, I've thought about this before not even just from like seeing that tweet yesterday it's why i also just sidetracked a little bit i never owned a pet as a kid my family hated pets i lived with my brother for a couple years in college and he has a cat so that's my only ever experience having a pet cat would just like lie down and roll around in the sun you know all the time and like if i was a cat i think that's exactly what i would want to be doing just lying down sun rays on me just rolling around you know cat life dude for me i uh i would test the nine lives theory and if it does if oh it's, my god if, but if it's bullshit so be it i'm dead but then uh, you're fucking dead <laughs> yeah but like but then i'll know the nine lives isn't correct well, you won't because you'll be non-existent on that note folks thank you very much uh, for tuning into episode four. Dino, thank you very much, man.